I'm getting old. My back hurts. I'm sorry. What'd you do? <laughs> I don't know. I pulled like a muscle. I did it like that. Remember that same thing I did a, like a year and a half ago with that muscle in the back? The thing that got me to go get all of my like blood work done, remember? Well, maybe it's time to do your blood work. <laughs> I don't know. Is a muscle pull like your indicator of like, oh yeah, I remember. I have to go to the doctor. All I remember is it took me forever to get rid of it. Are you ready? What is she eating? She's playing with a toy from Miss Tara. Are you ready? Okay. Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 140 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various Keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah this keto on the couch almost didn't happen this week so rachel yesterday i was at my games because it's sunday because somehow we could not move filming keto on the couch to any other day no i think we just like to torture ourselves with let's have a long morning and then film keto on the couch well and i don't want to do it like wednesday or thursday <laughs> it's like the week isn't over yet right so rachel texts me while i'm at my game and it was ridiculously hot yesterday yeah and we're on astroturf and the message is like, hey, like, uh, we're responsible for shutting down the church this week, which means we have to be there like an extra hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. And so she's like, how about filming Keto on the Couch tonight, meaning Saturday night, instead of Sunday afternoon? And I read that and I was like... I got new replies, so I thought, well, that's probably a new. I read that when I went up on the clock and I was like, yeah, I'm not even answering that. I'm going to act like I didn't read that. What? Did you text me? <laughs> because I was like, first of all, I knew you were going to be exhausted. Yeah. I knew it because I didn't go to church on Saturday night because I had to work all day. And I knew you'd be exhausted not getting home till 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. And then I was on the football field from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And again, AstroTurf, 95 degrees. I had no desire to do it. And I was like, you know what? If we're going to just have a long night on Sunday, we'll just skip Keto on the Couch this week. I can't, though. I love Keto on the Couch. Keto on the Couch is my favorite thing to record, which is why there's a Keto on the Couch this week. Yes. But this week will probably be a little bit shorter. Just a little heads up. I got... um to sleep in until 4 a.m. today. Really? It was 5 a.m.? Yeah. Because the true. alarm went off at 3, which I've told you a million times. When it goes off, you might as well just get up because that extra hour is doing nothing. But usually what I do is reset the morning, like Sunday morning, right. for like the services. But because I stayed late, I reset last night. Yeah. So that. We were ready for today. Alarm went off at 3 a.m. Rachel's like, I'm going to go sleep one more hour to 4 a.m. But <laughs> it's fallback day. So really in your mind, it was 5 a.m. Let me tell you, as I was walking out the door, I like side glanced and saw the oven and started to freak out that I was running late. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, the oven is not my phone. It doesn't automatically That's reset. Right. So, um... I usually reset the oven when I notice it, but I didn't. I ran out the door. Then I got in my car and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I realized, same thing. Okay, so here's a good question. Daylight savings kind of comes around. What is your order for setting things? Somebody had a meme up about this <laughs> the other day. So your phone's obviously automatically reset. And then like, what is your order? Do you go around the house and reset everything on that day? Or do you wait a few days or a couple of weeks or... Is it as you see it, you do it? Like usually the stove like will change pretty quickly because you look at it all the, the time. The microwave. My car, it takes me three months. And then usually three months in, I'm like, oh, I should reset that. And then I'm like, why am I bothering? In like another two months, it's going to reset itself back to the regular time. Seriously. What is your order for like, do you ignore the one in the car or what do you guys do? Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I usually do the oven and then I just, but I left and I think it's still probably wrong. It's still, I saw this morning too and I almost reset it. And then I was like, yeah, no. So what will happen will be, I will 
be getting up to take Caleb to school and stuff tomorrow and then freak out that I'm running late again and then I'll get mad and set it. But you know what happens then when you reset it? We have a quick power surge and it goes back to flashing zero or 12. That's so annoying. How long do you guys let it flash 12 when it does happen like that? Our microwave has be, been acting really wonky. Oh my God. I'm so annoyed. That microwave is less than a year old. I got to call Whirlpool about it. I'm gonna, I got to remember to call tomorrow. And yeah, what happens is is you'll it'll work and then all of a sudden you can't do anything with it. And like it's the touchpad. And I even know what causes that with the front touchpad. From what I understand, everyone says that it happens because, like, when you're boiling stuff, the steam gets up inside of the electronics, and they you need know to it. Raise it higher. I think. I think what they tell you is don't boil water underneath it. But it's I mean, a stove. if all of these companies know that it does that, why not seal that thing in better? I was gonna say, why can't there be something on the bottom? I don't know, but I just remember it happening to us years ago on a different microwave in our old house. And the technician telling me that, yeah, that the, when you boil water underneath, a lot of times it causes those keypads to short out. Really frustrating. But it's really frustrating because the only way, at least we can fix it. All we have to do is unplug the microwave and then plug it back in and it works again. What I love is when the kids get like really lazy. Anthony was trying to heat something up yesterday and it was like, it just kind of conked out and wouldn't like work anymore. And he's like, you know what? It's warm enough. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like you just totally just gave up. And he's like, meh, it's... It's it's tepid, but you know what? I'm just gonna Well do the it. problem is though, to unplug our microwave, you have to empty out our entire keto flour closet it's, to get to it because it is an the plug is behind the almond flour and the erythritol and so you gotta take everything out of the shelf, unplug it, and then put everything back in. So it's Halloween this week. It was. And it was fun. I had a great time. I mean the entire family just got together. We all sat out in our driveway handing everything out, just Kind of having a good time talking, you know, like catching up on what's going on in our lives. Yeah, because just because you live in close proximity with your family does not mean that you get to actually hang out with your family. Yeah, we all live like such busy lives. Really, the only time we all get together, like even though, again, like Rachel said, like her brother lives like very close to us is on a holiday or something like that. We need to schedule these things more and just make it happen because... Yeah, otherwise we don't. We don't get together. So it was fun. We had an awesome time. We had like 400 trick-or-treaters. Yeah. And I love it because like you like decorated the whole front of the house like in cat in the hat stuff. And people come up to our house and they're like, oh, you guys every year have a theme. And it's usually a very simple theme. It's nothing like super scary or something like that. Yeah. It's like, like little kid friendly. Yeah, because I'm. I think there's a lot of people that, that do like scary Halloween, which right. is fine. I'm not like, I mean, whatever floats your boat, but... um. Yeah, I, I always want like toddlers and preschoolers to be able to have kind of a safe place to kind of onboard them into trick or treating. Right. Right. Like if they only can make it to one house, come to our house, you know, you're not going to get scared. You're going to get like a themed house, but not like no one's going to grab you and there's no fear of you being scared. I thought it was interesting. A lady who lives like down at the end of our block, she came up at the end of the night and she's like, can I give you my stuff to like hand out because nobody's going past your house. I know. So I we... felt like so bad. They're like, come to our house, all the Dr. Seuss stuff. Yeah, we're not going to go there. We're going to go a different way now. I know. I felt bad, but it was nice that, you know, so many people came and a kind of a last minute addition to what we were giving out at Halloween and what I kind of showed on Instagram and on different, you know, vlogs up until Halloween was for infants and toddlers gave away board books. Yeah. Came across like a whole bunch of like really inexpensive books. And that was great. That was a huge hit, especially for parents who are like, yeah, we got dressed up, the kids coming, but there's nothing we can give to this child. Right. <laughs> They're not, I mean, we're, we don't want to give them a, a lollipop. And even some of the toys that we were giving away were kind of small. Yeah. Cause there were a lot of little kids. Yeah. Speaking of little kids. So two things happened. We had, the most awesome costume I have ever seen I know in my life. I know who you're talking about, and I totally agree. And I wish I could put a picture up. If I can find a picture and pixelate the child's face, because yes. I don't want to put the child. But so, but I know your brother took a picture of this. It was a little boy. He had to be like what two? Maybe two years old. Dressed up in like um, a reflective kind of outfit, like somebody who's like a road worker, right? right? And he is pushing a miniature 
waste management garbage can. And it was to scale. I don't even know where. I don't know where they got the garbage can. It must have been some sort of promotional thing for garbage people. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And it had two wheels so he can kind of lean it back and push it. But I mean, it was tiny. I mean, it was like the height of him. And he was going down and his father goes, he loves garbage trucks. Yeah. Just loves garbage trucks. And I'm like, it was the greatest costume I have ever 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 see it was so unique and actually both caleb and anthony were like that is brilliant because he can get as much goodies as his size yeah. because his trick-or-treat bag is as big as he is essentially it was hysterical but of course it was so big like he could barely push it so the dad is having like god bless that dad because the dad was pretty much having to push it and it's tiny so he's having to bend over and help him push the thing i don't think he minded a bit it, it was, was just just such an awesome costume. Adorable. But on the other side, I think the strangest thing we had is at the very end of the night, some lady just walks up to us and she was like, you know, if you were good people, you would like give me some water. I could really use some water. So, well, I gave her some water right. because, yeah, but it was just odd. I'm like, I, I didn't kind know. Kind of demanding. I didn't know we were supposed to have it out. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. So I went and got her water, but like, yeah, I was... I was just, I, I was alarmed. And she didn't have a child. No. Which was the other thing. She just randomly walking the streets looking for water. That was the only thing I thought was really awesome. There was one lady who was kind of walking in the neighborhood who was pregnant. And she was going to all the houses and just, she was like, I need my chocolate fix. She actually put it on Facebook. I thought it was funny. Yeah. She was like, yeah, I needed my chocolate fix. I don't have a kid and this yet. Is, I'm practicing for when I have a kid. Yeah. I'm hitting every house. What do you got? And I was like. I hate to tell you, but we've got like, you know, toys, yeah. Play-Doh. You should probably get used to playing with that, though, if you're going to be a new mom anyway, right? Yeah. Like, put it in your carpet and see if you can get it out, because that's what all new moms have to do, right? Figure out how you can get Play-Doh out of your carpet. I was really proud of us for Halloween, though, because normally what we do for Halloween, again, the whole family gets together in our driveway. We actually shut down Rachel's mom's house and shut down her brother's house. So mm -hmm. I'm surprised they don't have a bunch of eggs on their house. Because, I know. We like, there's signs. never anything at their house. Like, come the, see us at this the house. The signs are like, go see us around the corner. Yeah. So generally, though, Rachel's brother orders, like, tons of food, and everybody sits out in the front and eats. Last year, he ordered Popeyes. Yeah. And we were, like, just peeling off, like, all of the, the, breading. the breading and stuff and eating Popeyes. This year, he ordered pizza yeah which we love pizza but we're not gonna eat it so what we did was we were doing the wing it challenge this week with vivid and katie thanks guys and it was great so we had the wings left over from tuesday and or, and from when and then we had them on wednesday yep. and then obviously halloween was thursday so we'd saved enough and we just heated them all up and said we're just going to eat them right before, like when everybody else is eating their pizza, that's when we'll eat them. So we didn't feel left out. No, it worked out great. And it was all like festive, fun food. So I think honestly, like wings may be a good, um, just kind of fun food for Halloween. Like I Halloween actually tradition. felt guilty because we were eating wings and they were just only getting pizza. But then they got, yeah, I know. <laughs> I definitely think we got the better end of the deal, but at least, you know, they had like fun takeout food yep. for the evening. And so did we. It mm -hmm. was nice. So speaking of the wing it challenge, it was really interesting. We did it a little bit differently because I just, I feel guilty if we order wings because we don't order wings very often. But again, buy one, get one free on Tuesdays. I don't think I could make them for that I price. don't think you could either. Especially by the time you add in all the seasonings and then the time and Be having dubs. to cook it. So we got the Buffalo Wild Wings. We mentioned it in the vlog that went up this morning. And... You know, we had the whole week, but I just feel guilty like saying, hey, I get double the wings of you. Hmm. So we ate the same amount of wings every single day and I just added in extra calories. But it was like a nice break. It kind of like was an homage to the way we used to do keto like a couple of years ago. Yeah, where we kept it really simple. Yeah. Well, remember a couple of years ago when Buffalo Wild Wings used to have their buy one, get one free, but you can do it takeout. Yes. And that was could, way better. It, it was much better. Because when you were able to do takeout, we would order a bunch of wings. And we ate wings for like three days every single week. It was just very financially great. And then also it was tasty. easy. <laughs> and tasty. But it was easy. You didn't have to think. Yep. It was awesome. But honestly, I'm sick of wings now. Are you? 
Yeah, we did the wings for four days. I, I kind of got sick of them a little bit. That's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite things, but after a while, I'm like, I want something else. And the bottom line is, like, when you do eat wings, it's usually higher in protein. So you don't get much more protein other than that. So He gets bored easily. I, I could, do. I could eat the same thing for months. <laughs> Like, I just, it doesn't bother me. As long as I get food and it's a decent portion. Now, what I can't do is say, like, hey, this is your food and this is what we're going to eat for a long term. Whereas he can eat less food, but he wants variety. I don't necessarily need variety, but I want a lot of food. I don't need a lot of variety. I need a little bit of variety. Like, ground beef and eggs, good variety for me. Ground beef, one meal. Eggs, another meal. Add in some coffee or maybe a keto bar or a keto bar. I don't need, like, every single day, like... I need steak on one day and I need ribeye on another day and I need, you know, ribs on this day and, and ground beef. I don't need that. I just need something so that every single meal isn't eggs or every single meal isn't ground beef. Yeah. I remember when we did the egg challenge. That was the worst thing ever. <laughs> I loved it. It was awesome. Well, we didn't let you add anything else. But speaking of low calorie, mm -hmm. I got to grab something that I found in Aldi's today. Oh. I'm back. First, I forgot about this. We oh, got this stuff. My goodness. At Aldi's the other day. I don't know if it's going to focus. Let me see if I can put it up closer so I can focus. This cheese. This cheese. This is marinated fresh mozzarella cheese. It's a braid. It's like a long thing that's been kind of braided. And they're like $3 in Aldi's. Oh, my gosh. So good. So the ingredients in this are pasteurized milk. It's basically, you know, mozzarella cheese. And then it's got red pepper, olive oil, garlic, parsley. The, ser the nutrition is a serving size is one ounce, just like most cheese, right? There's eight servings in this pouch, which you can it's actually a, make this into eight servings. Yeah. Easily. It's a good amount. It is, what is that, 90 calories? 90 calories or 80 calories? 80, 80 calories uh, per, per ounce, six grams of fat. And then where's the protein? Six, Six grams. grams of protein. And it is less than one gram of carb, which is normal for all cheeses. I always round it up to one. My suggestion is to keep it good and cold. Yeah. If it's good and cold and you slice it up, what well, happens? The thing is, is you can unbraid this. So you get this nice long piece. What makes this so good and why normally one ounce of cheese is not nearly enough for me. I, I'm a, I love cheese. Me too. This is so flavorful. If you ever went to like an Italian restaurant, though Anthony disagreed with me. Yeah, but I was totally on board with you. If you ever went to an Italian restaurant and used to get fresh garlic knots, mm -hmm. this has all the flavor. As soon as you put it in your mouth, you're like, garlic knots. Yep, that's I the mean, first thing that comes to my except mind. Except for it's cheese. Yeah. But you will swear... With that first burst of flavor that you are eating a garlic knot. Especially, again, if you're getting it cold. Yeah. Because it's really dense. You know how mozzarella does. You know, yeah. once it's been out or you warm it up a little bit, then it gets like softer. But when it was really good and cold and you get that first bite, you're like, oh my goodness. Because it's got a good density to it. It was it was amazing. And again, when you look at this, you're like, eight servings? No, but it, again, it's like a braided rope. So when you unbraid it, it's like three times longer than this package And for is. like $3? For $3. The flavor is intense. I mean, you can almost see, again, I don't know if I can get it to focus, but if you can look in there, like take a look and you can see the little pieces of garlic in there. It is what you want to have cut up for your holiday parties. Yeah. With little, you know, just even a toothpick in that, like... Oh my goodness. It's so, Flavor Town. Yeah, this, but this stuff was so good. I ran to Aldi's today on my way home from church. I was actually looking for some ground beef because we didn't have anything defrosted. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get some more of that cheese because it's really good. And I don't know if this is one of those like special things we'll where when ya. it's gone, it's gone. Right. And the other thing we keep looking in Aldi for is the bread. They're supposed to have that zero carb bread. We haven't found it and yet. And we can't find it. And so, yeah, so I picked that, but... While I was there, I found this sitting on the shelf. What? It's boneless pork belly. Oh my lord, you need to heat that up. We're going to have some of this. This is actually boneless pork be belly. It's sous vide. It's already cooked. Just heat it and serve it. Um, and there is, so this is what made me think of this when you were talking about like a lot of food, you know, or, or a little bit of food. Yeah. So there's four servings in this pot, in this box. We're going to I haven't even opened this up, so... That's four servings. 
No. <laughs> yeah, that's four servings. Because it's pork belly. There is, a serving size is three ounces. There's 420 calories in a serving. What? So if you eat this entire thing, you're eating 1,680 calories. More than my day. More than your day. Well, not right now. No, not. yeah, not right now. There's 43 grams of fat, 8 grams of protein, and zero carbs in it. Wow. So the ingredients in this are pork belly, water, and sea salt. So, I mean, at least it's nothing bad. So, yeah, we're going to try this. It actually says the, the preferred method is to cook it on a stove top. It says slice it into smaller pieces, heat up a, a medium-sized skillet over medium heat, and then brown each piece on all sides until it's crisp. So we're going to have some of this with our yeah, dinner. Yeah, because it says there's, like, a microwave version, but, like, who wants to, microwave like, waste fat. it? No, I don't know about that. But it wasn't even expensive. Rachel's like, how much was it? And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, yes, you do. I'm like, I really don't because I didn't pay attention to it. I was like, I just want it. But I bought four of these and this, and I spent 20 bucks. So it was about $5. Okay. Maybe not even. Probably about $4, because these are three and change a piece. Because so. sometimes I'll be like, how much did you spend? And all of a sudden he has amnesia. <laughs> like, I don't know. Where did I go today? I just know I spent $20. But I bought, again, four of these, and these are three and change. We'll so. put these in the refrigerator and then come back, because, yeah, we don't want to warm those up. <laughs> You have a box over there. What's that? We got mail. We got mail. We got mail from Miss Sherry in Front Royal, Virginia. Oh, before we even do the mail, I did want to say I'm so sorry. So in today's vlog, like mm -hmm. I had opened up, I think it was a vet. A vet? Had sent me those keto bricks. Yes. And I really appreciate that. But I was watching, I'm like, I didn't really like say thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I was just thinking that. I and didn't say thank you at all. Well, I was like, I'm really excited about this. But what happened was, is I was filming that while Anthony was in the store. And out of the as I was getting ready to say that, Anthony started opening the door. So I turned the video off. Aww. So thank you so much, guys, for that stuff. First of all, the beef sticks were amazing. Already ate them. Rachel did not get a bite, by the way. Oh, my. <laughs> you ate them both? I ate them both. You can have the pink Zip grapefruit is. zippers. Okay, I do like that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. It wasn't that I didn't appreciate it. It's that, like, yeah, Anthony just jumped in the car and I had to turn off the thing. Crazy. So, okay. So this is from Shelly, or Sherry, rather, in Front Royal, uh, Virginia. Sherry, thank you so much. I miss Front Royal. That's a beautiful area Never in Virginia. Been. It's gorgeous. So it says, Joe and Rachel, thank you so much for all you do for our keto family. Both of you are such a blessing. I'm so grateful that I stumbled upon um, your YouTube videos when I started keto. I'm glad too because, oh my goodness, I, I love Miss Sherry. I'm not crafty, neither am I. So my ornaments are a little boring, which they are not boring in the least. They're awesome. Wait till you see them. Says, I hope the t-shirts fit because there's some really hilarious t-shirts here. Sorry in advance, Rachel, but I couldn't resist. Wait until you see this. So I have not seen these yet. I handed the box to you and left. So first of all, this is adorable. This okay. is one for for Miss Rachel. It says, coffee is always a good idea. I love it. And I totally agree. Coffee is always a good idea. Then wait till you see this adorable ornament, which basically looks like it was made for Tabitha. It says, home is where your lab left the oh, ball. Oh, wow. Is that adorable? That is awesome. I don't know if it's focusing. Let me get it. There you go. You just got to get close. It is so adorable. That is adorable. And it really speaks this house because Tabitha has so many toys. And, and they're, they're all everywhere. over the house. And if you pick them up, she's got a little bin. You may have seen it sometimes in my office. It's underneath the vacuum. She's got a little bin that all of her toys go in there. It's very upset if you put her stuff away. If you go put her toys in that bin, she takes them all out and they're spread all over the floor. In she's there. like a girlfriend that's trying to move into your house without your permission. <laughs> like she's just subtly, like every single room, she has to plant her stuff in there. Speaking of her, I want to see these t-shirts, but I did want to say, I was so impressed with her this morning. <clears throat> so... It's Sunday morning. She was laying on the couch. Mm -hmm. So I was waiting for Anthony because I bring Anthony to church. You were already there. So I yelled at Anthony, are you ready? He's like, yes. He's coming out of his room. And I say the same thing every Sunday morning. Put the dog away. 
Yeah. Because we're gone for a long time. So the only time she has to really be in her cage. We put her in her crate just for her because, you know, whatever. I don't want her chewing anything, getting herself into trouble, anything like that. And she loves her crate. Most of the time we leave it open and she just kind of goes and lays in there. When she's like, I'm done with you people. She goes and like, it's like her little retreat. Right. So I guess she knows what put the dog away means. Mm -hmm. So I said, put the dog away. And this is the second time I've now seen her do this. She immediately gets up off the couch, steps down, goes in. And lays down in the cage. Oh, my god! So you don't even have to, like, say, hey. Usually it's like, hey, Tabitha, go night-night. But if she's laying in here, just say, put the dog away and watch. She will go and lay down. She's like, I guess I'm that dog that they're <laughs> speaking of. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so let's see the t-shirts. And I, these ornaments are awesome. Those ornaments are Thank awesome. Thank you so much. And this week we have to get a tree. Yeah, I was looking on QVC today because they don't have the one that we used to have. I forgot even the name of the company that made Bethlehem that. Bethlehem Lights. Bethlehem Nights, right? That was it. Lights, I think. Lights. Yeah, they don't have that one anymore. But a little like uh, tip, pro tip for QVC and what we always look for is you can get as is. It's called as is. Yeah. Trees and as is merchandise. And basically, it's not like irregular pantyhose. I've gotten that where it's like the crotch is like, you know, it's where their the ankle outlet. is. You can go and find the outlet and what it, it's stuff that people like got and said, hey, I don't like this and I want to return it. Or sometimes it's just ones that have been on air and because they've taken them out of the box at all, they can't sell them as. That's know. what our last tree was. Yeah. So it was just on. What do I care if like I, I want it to be touched by David Venable? <laughs> Don't you? Like, yes. I want to know he was on there. Okay, let's see these, these shirts. I uh, want to see the shirts because right, so, I love t-shirts. So this one is for Joe. It says, I never dreamed I'd grow up to be a super cool referee, but here I am rocking it. That is awesome. Is that awesome? I love it. That is adorable. I love it. And I laughed so hard. I seriously like snorted when I saw this one. It says... Just a girl who loves iguanas. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that hilarious? I love the smell of fresh brand new t-shirt. Where did you even find that? This is so is awesome. awesome. Like epic. I cannot wait to wear this. So yeah, I'm going to be sporting the iguanas. And P.S. I almost... Like, didn't go to church yesterday because I tried to get in the car and there on the driver's side was an iguana sitting there like, hello, like waiting. And I'm like, oh, but fortunately he left and I was able to get in my car. Well, it's... Thank you so much, Sherry. Yes, thank you so much. It is starting to cool down, so maybe the iguanas will go a little bit more dormant now. I hope so. <laughs> okay, you want to do comments? Yes, please. Let's do our comments. There's nothing else we have to talk about, is there? I don't think so. Okay. Subscriber of the week is going to be Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. And uh, I'm going to put Rhonda's pictures up here. And uh, Rhonda wrote, the first pics were taken in February and the second pics were taken yesterday morning. Only a 27 pound difference. Only? Like I was 27 say, pounds is awesome. That's amazing. Uh, she said, only a 27 pound difference, but I've lost several inches. I started out intermittent fasting, but was struggling to stick to it. Then I discovered keto and I absolutely love it. My fibromyalgia is much better and I'm able to go back to work after having to leave my job in March because of the fibromyalgia. Wow, what good news. I am not in this journey alone. My niece is also doing keto and fasting. We are in the journey together. She has lost almost 50 pounds and I'm so proud of her. Wow. I'm never looking back. Thank you for sharing your journey. Seeing your stories and keep also keeps me going and I've learned so much from 2KK. I love watching the YouTube videos and my next goal is to lose another 12 pounds by New Year's Day. You go, girl. You look incredible. Oh my, what are you talking about only? That you look incredible. You look absolutely Be proud of it. Gorgeous. 27 pounds. You know, that is that is the problem. You know, I almost feel like you need to have disclaimers. Like, you know, you used to see those infomercials and stuff like Results are not normal, right? Right. And it's like people hear about usually guys who, like myself, who drop 20 pounds in the first 30 700 days. 700 pounds in the first week. And they're like, oh my gosh, like keto's not working. I've only lost like five pounds in the last two weeks. That is like above average. Like remember, like a, a healthy weight loss is a half a pound to a pound a week. Yeah. 
that's a healthy weight loss. And really, like, two pounds a week is, like, I know, like, is more than you should be really losing. Well, you know what I love? Every pound is a pound gone for good. Right. Like, it's not coming back. Like, right. Like, what, you know, every pound, like, however long it takes when it's gone, like, bye, 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 like, not coming back. Right. Like, I love it. Yeah. But I think what happens is, is people hear these, you know, stories of, like, even, like I said, people and myself who had, like, this ridiculous, like, drop 10 pounds in the first week, which, by the way, is mostly water, because I never drank water. It's a guy thing, too. But they think that because they're only losing a pound a week or two pounds a week, that that's not enough. That is, like, incredible. Incredible. And it's sustainable, and that's the difference. It's one thing if... You go on Jenny Craig or you go to Weight Watchers or you go hit the gym for three months and drop 15 pounds. But is it sustainable? You're eating now foods that taste good. You're not starving yourself. Well, that's my thing. Like, how can I maintain weight but, like, eat? Yeah. Actually eat and maintain weight. Like, yeah. Like, have a life. And, yeah, you see a lot of um, kind of, like, the very, like, fitness-heavy you know, even competitions where they're talking about, well, we stayed in the gym for 24 hours a day, for seven days a week, and we lost all this weight. Okay, well, are you going to be able to go home after this program is over and and continue exercising 24 hours a day, seven days a well, week? Well, it's like you the Biggest work. Loser. Yeah, the Biggest Loser. Most of the people that were ever on the Biggest Loser gained all of their weight back. Because they have to go back to a real life. It wasn't sustainable. So if you're losing slowly... But you're losing, don't worry about it. If you're losing a quarter of a pound a week, but it's consistently a quarter of a pound a week, but you're awesome. enjoying the food you're eating yeah. and you're not starving yourself, be happy. You know what else I like is that she's doing this with her niece. That's right. Because a lot of times you think, well, it has to be somebody like maybe it's got to be my kid or it's got to be my spouse or, you know, m my girlfriend that lives next door. But like. I love the fact that even if it's somebody, like a cousin, like me and my cousin have, have gone on weight loss challenges together. Like, right. I love that. And if you don't have anybody, you have everybody here at 2KK, go yep. over on our Facebook family group. You've got us. Okay, so you ready for comments? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this comment, yes, sir. It, this comment is not from last week's Keto on the Couch. It is from the vlog that went up this morning. Oh, okay. But it was hysterical and I had to put it up. All right. So we we're talking about it is no shave November. And I have no intentions on shaving my face. I will be shaving my head. But I'm not going to shave my face. And I tend to do this every November just because then I don't have to bother shaving. You guys are going to see Santa Claus appear. <laughs> the nice thing is, is I don't have to share a razor with you. Yeah, because I'm like shaving, but you're not. Yeah. So, um, Viva J put up a thing. Because remember in that video, mm -hmm. I said that I think you should do no shave too. Oh, and I'm like, oh no. So Viva J said, come on, Rachel, go on natural. It's winter and you need to keep warm. Oh my gosh. Well, I could. I absolutely could grow a pair of pants between now and December 1st. You said it, I didn't. Just I The fact that your leg hair grows faster than my beard hair is like kind of insane. Caleb and I both joke that, like, our superpower is rapid growth eyebrows. <laughs> like, we can absolutely grow eyebrows, like, so fast it's, like, not even funny. So, yeah. And I can I can grow leg hair. Okay. So, Vita wrote. Hey, Vita. I feel like I could drink three keto chows in one hour, too. But then I don't know if I could make it with the rest of the day without eating anything else. Yeah, that is a challenge to like wait, but it was like I knew something amazing was coming, so I was able to kind of like put it in its place. Speaking of the fact that three keto chows did not fill you up when you drank them in an hour, but when we went out to Buffalo Wild Wings, this was a very interesting phenomenon that like we're going to start exploring a little bit more. Okay. The fact that Rachel could not eat 19 chicken wings. I know. I felt like such a slacker. That so is a lot less volume of food yes. than three of those ice creams. But 18 chicken wings made you... Rachel went home that night and like got in bed and like, I am so fat, nasty, full, I can't move. I was so disappointed with myself. <laughs> just, just really upset. But it's just making me wonder, like, why is it? Why could you consume three giant bowls of ice cream... And not be full, mm -hmm. but you can't eat 18 wings. Well, I mean, I was full, but I wasn't like fat, nasty full. But yeah. with after chicken wings, I was fat, nasty full. Like, I can't eat more than 8 to 10 wings in a sitting. I have to give myself a break. <laughs> okay. 
So Ruth wrote, hey, Ruth. and this one's about email. She goes, I have everyone beat. I have 97,676 long story. Wow. She said, I'm old. I have an old email account, and I didn't have access for 10 years during my workday, pre-smartphone. Oh, my gracious. That, that is awesome. This is making me want to check. So years ago, I actually had another YouTube for video games. Remember when I used oh, yeah. to do reviews and things? Yeah. And I haven't checked that email account. Like, I, the email account obviously still exists, okay. but I deleted it off of my phone and off of my computer. I want to go back and check and see how many emails are in there. I want to go back and check my MySpace and see if there's any more, like, friends. I forgot about MySpace. I used to love MySpace, hello, because you could add a song, <laughs> right? Like, why doesn't Facebook allow you to have, like, your own song? Money. Okay. Jen wrote. Hey, Jen. I love the idea of a live while you decorate your tree. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. Give us all a heads up on the date so we can make sure that we all send you ornaments. Um, it can be a whole event. Maybe Joe can debut a new recipe for Rachel to try, and Rachel can sing for us. Charity can climb the tree, and Tabitha can try to eat an ornament. It'll be like those classic holiday specials from days ago. Oh my gosh! I got it all planned out. I love, you, you need a director for this one. I was gonna say, you, lady, you're coming and directing this thing. I'm loving that idea. <laughs> it's a great, we're definitely going to do it live. And if, for those of you who are new to our channel, what we're doing this year is we're doing something, I don't know, we did this on a whim. Um, we're going to do a subscriber Christmas tree. The Christmas tree that we use for our house is only going to be decorated with ornaments that subscribers send us. Yeah. So if we don't get any more than the few that we've gotten, that's what's on our tree. That and lights. We're not going to add anything. We're not going to go purchase one ornament. It's only going to be things from you guys. Mm -hmm. And so there's an address down in the description that you can mail us ornaments to. And then what we're going to do is probably do like... Even craft ones? Even a craft one. You don't have to buy anything. The I kids make one in Sunday school? Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is like two weeks before Christmas, we're going to pick probably like our 10 favorite. I think. Something no, like we're going to let them decide. No, we're going to pick our oh, ten, 10 favorite, favorite ones. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to let you guys decide what the best two are or the most popular two. And they're going to get some kind of like a gift back. Yeah. They got to get a good, good prize. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Terry wrote. Hey, Terry. Nothing like a live tree. I get to clean up pine needles 365 days, but it's well worth it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love a live tree, but I don't like cleaning up after Yeah. It. She wrote, Tabitha and Grayson are going to love your uh, rooster. Tabitha's going to squeeze it, and Grayson's going to mimic it. I almost always had perfect attendance. When we used to drive to Florida for Christmas, I ended up missing the day before Christmas vacation started, and I would get upset as it would be the only day that I missed. Aw, gosh, I love that. Jennifer wrote. Hey, Jennifer. Oh, Rachel, I love you. I'm like a toddler. If I see it, it's mine. I love you. <laughs> she said, no grape. Lemon is my favorite now, but it was pink lemonade. Okay, so, man, I feel like me and you are besties because <laughs> that is exactly how I feel. I like Lemon, and I also like, I just kind of rediscovered pink lemonade as I drank my fruit punch once. I haven't opened that new box yet. And then Joe had mentioned like, all the limones are suddenly missing. And I'm like, uh-oh, I better stop drinking all those. So then I moved to pink lemonade and it's up there for me too. We need to get through the other flavors. We still have some blueberry ones. The blue raspberry is not my groove. We still need to go through them. It tastes very medicine-y to me. <laughs> More, it's like super vitamin-y. We did get from Amazon the iced tea one. I don't like that one. It's okay, in my opinion. I've always liked iced tea. It it seems it reminds me of getting um a stomach ache. No, not a stomach ache. A One of those ones, uh, like the brisk iced teas, the cans of brisk. It's got a little bit of an iced tea flavor, but with like but, a carbonated element. Yeah. So, it, but it's not overpowering iced tea. It's not like sweet tea. I mean, the bottom line, we're from the south, like sweet tea. Yeah. Right? Of course, like sweet tea down here is raspberry tea. No, don't do that. Yeah, I well, can't that's stand not that. sweet tea. But I'm talking about sweet tea down here. You go to a place down here, a good southern place. Sweet tea Your is your teeth will fall out. Ninety percent sugar, yeah. like ten times more sugar than Mountain Dew. It comes out like syrup. 
It's like, <laughs> you have to wait a minute for it to like hit the glass. So anytime I drink iced tea, like that's what I try to remember. So like iced tea is kind of just out of my life at this point. It because... is kind of like a brisk iced tea, but like, yeah. It, it's it... okay, but I probably wouldn't buy it again. Like I'll drink them, but I probably won't buy it again. The next flavor we need to try is the citrus one. Yeah. We haven't tried the citrus one. And I did see that one on Amazon as well. Okay. So, I think it was like $20 for 20 tubes. That's not super bad. Tubes. Debbie wrote. Hey, Debbie. Love Joe's chicken. I bet Tabitha will like it too. Ha ha. Yeah, she liked She's it. She's already enjoyed it. Yeah, she already took the ear off the top and then I had to go hide it because I want to make sure it still squeaks. The chicken had a little ear on it? Yeah. That's like cute. up on the very top. Uh, she wrote, definitely a fake tree that looks real kind of girl. I uh, love the idea of a live tree trimming party and also a chronometer video. All of your ideas are awesome. We need a new recipe. I agree that we do need a new recipe for the tree thing, and it needs to be a Christmas ball. <laughs> Christmas balls. Now that high school football season's over, I'm going to have a little bit more time to work on some projects that I want to work on that won't include you, like the chronometer. There's not going to have two of us sitting in front of a computer telling you how to do chronometer. No. We've just been trying to get through high school football season. I have one more week of youth football, and then, like, I'm Basically, done. Basically, me with a chronometer, like, thing would just be me rage quitting the whole <laughs> process, getting frustrated, crying. No one wants to just see me crying and being mad. Right. So Alan wrote, Hey Alan. Love the different way that birds imitate the daily sounds of our lives. One very early morning, a kid with an air rifle thought it would be fun to shoot out the windows in our little business building. Oh. Our outside glass door was shattered. The cops came in to have a look around and about died when from a, her darkened corner, Lulu joyfully greeted them with, Good morning. Oh, how sweet is that? Oh my gosh. But like, I'm sorry about your windows. Yeah. What a poopy head. It, it is really interesting, especially African Grey's. I mean, all of them talking. That's why I love just listening to her talk and sing. And the nice thing about African Grey's is they don't scream. Yeah, they don't scream. They don't scream. They just make a lot of noise. You hear them chirping and singing and repeating words, but they don't scream like a lot of Amazon parrots. So Bambi wrote, Hey, Bambi. My mom always made us stay in bed if we stayed home sick from school. It deterred pretending, but in ninth grade, she made me go to school. It was near Thanksgiving. Though I was sick, I wound up vomiting in the lunchroom all the way to the nurse's office. Oh. I tried to be excused, but couldn't get a teacher's attention until it was too late. She, was, she never did that again. She also wrote, I like real looking Christmas trees. I hate having to clean up after pine needles all year. Oh my goodness. Well, Bambi, I'm so sorry about like the puking thing. Oh, that like, my mom was the same way. Like if you're too sick to, st you know, go to school, then you're certainly too sick to play, be out of bed, like do anything. Yeah. It was supposed to be like super boring if you were stuck in. It really deterred it for us because we only had one television in the house. It's not like everybody had a television. There was no such thing as video games. So, yeah, if you stayed home sick, you were staying in bed and, like, with a book or something, which I hated to read. So, it really did deter you from staying home sick. But we did do that to our kids. I remember, like, you know, you would come and be like, well, Caleb is sick or Anthony is sick. And like, they're going to stay home. And I'm like, they can stay home. They are not playing a video game. And like, you hear Caleb, like, putting my shoes on. <laughs> Well, they would come and say, like, I have a headache. Well, if you have a headache, you definitely aren't playing video games. And you're not watching TV because all of those flashing lights, they're going to trigger your headache even more. So that kind of did deter things with our kids, too. You know what? I'm going to school. <laughs> um, a pal wrote. Hey, a pal. I don't know what pickling egg recipes that you're looking at, but I've never had to burp mine. I make a half a gallon almost every other week. I store mine in the fridge and I've never burped the jar. I use pickling spice, salt, vinegar, water. I bring to a boil, then let it simmer for five minutes. I cut up onion, garlic, jalapenos, and some fresh basil or dill. I leave it in the fridge for a week or more, and voila, you have pickled eggs. Now, he put that in our Facebook family group. I saw it. Gorgeous. It looks amazing. Like, just incredible presentation. Because here's the thing. I'm picturing... Like the the Quickie Mart sort of pickled egg. And that is not the most appetizing looking thing. Right. But what you posted looked like, I want to make that today. Yeah, I need to get a bigger jar. And I'm going to, we only have the quart size like mason jars. But I'm going to make that and I'm going to use that recipe because it, it looked so amazing. so good. Now, speaking of that, Renee wrote... Hey, My second job as a teenager in Northwest Florida was at a gas station. I mention the area because the items that I speak of are super Southern and many Northerners don't know how popular these things really are. 
we sold self-serve pickled eggs, pickled red hot sausage, and pickled pig's feet. I have never had that, and I want to try those. The self-serve part was always what grossed me out. Many times the kids came in and just used their hands to reach in, and when they got near the bottom of the huge jar, people using the tongs still had to reach through the juice to get the <laughs> items, though. All those germs also get picked, uh, pickled into the items. Oh. It just ruined it for me. I've had people try to tell me that the vinegar kills the germs, but not enough for me. I've bought jars of pre-made pickled eggs in the past for my own private use, but note to others, do not get them at a gas station. Yuck. Okay, as I'm hearing this, all I can think about is that, like, um, National Lampoon's Vacation, where they go to Cousin Eddie's house, and, like, she's stirring the Kool-Aid. <laughs> can I help you with that? Vicky, can I help you with that Kool-Aid? Please? Mmm, mmm, mmm. I don't know why they call this stuff hamburger helper. It does just fine by itself, huh? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, so Nicholas wrote. Hey, Nicholas. Uh, that's Hey Hey, best squeaky toy ever. Hey Hey, that's the chicken thing. <laughs> yes. I also get super uncomfortable receiving presents. I love giving them out, but I hate receiving them. As for nutrition labels, I think they should just do the label for the entire package in grams or ounces instead of by a serving. Then you just have to do the math for exactly what you use. True. It gives it a more real picture. I agree. Honestly, that isn't a bad idea because, again, you know, my serving size and your serving size may be different. Like, you may say, well, there's eight servings and I may say there's ten. Right. Or five. Or one. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, at least have it give me every, give me the whole story and then let me divide well, it. Well, the thing is, and this is, I completely agree. The, we've talked about this over and over. We need to do a special video just on like hidden carbs and deceptions on the nutrition labels because, yeah, it comes down to they can trick you into buying the product based on the serving size. Yeah. So if you can say, like you said, this has one serving in it, but they're going to put it as three servings because they can lower the calories and they can lower the carbs. Whereas one serving may give it five carbs, three servings gives it less than one. And the most recent thing that I've noticed is like, just go to uh, like the tomato sauce aisle and look and see, you, they're all the same size jars. They're all, you know, everything's the same. And then you look and it's like one of them, a serving size is a third of a cup, one's a fourth of a cup, one's a half a cup. Like it's very I always base it on a half a different. cup. Like Rouse's, it says a serving size is a half a cup. And that's about what we use. But then sometimes you're going to pick up another jar and it says a serving size is a quarter of a cup. The other day I picked one up, a serving size was a tablespoon. Who's using a tablespoon of tomato sauce? And it was pizza sauce. Please. <laughs> Uh, Linda wrote. Hey, Linda. Joe, I thought I was alone in feeling that way. I'm always the last one that opens my gifts. I enjoy people opening theirs, and I love the chicken gift. Yeah, my dad was the same way. He always wanted to play Santa, and then, like... He used to go into a little corner, and they didn't want to... Like, just like me. We want to see your reaction, Daddy. Like... Yeah. Amber wrote... Hey, Amber. I relate so much to what Joe was saying. I love giving gifts, but at Christmas time, I too will have a pile of unopened gifts while everyone else has already tore into theirs. Aww. And I'm like, let me just take these into my room and open them in private because it's very awkward to me. Oh, See, man. I'm not alone. No, you're not. I feel like maybe I should like stop being a, a child, <laughs> but like I <laughs> love getting gifts. <laughs> She also wrote, edit, my preference is real trees. However, they don't hold very heavy ornaments very well. That is true. That is they true. They don't hold the ornaments very well. I've actually, because sometimes, you know, later on when you're still decorating, like you've added an ornament, but it's very close to Christmas and that tree has been up since November 1st sometimes. Um, I've had it where I put the ornament on and it like came down the branch. It was like skinning the branch as it came down. So the lion chair wrote, hey, lion chair. I am so that way about opening presents. I don't like to be surprised or expected to act a certain way at the surprise. You must be a caloric, I think that's what that word is, personality, Joe, leader, decision maker, achiever, and Rachel is definitely a delightful, sanguine storyteller, life of the party, colorful and fun. Yes, she definitely wow, is. Wow, thank you. I like that. So a little side note or a little bit about my relationship with Rachel when it comes to presents. Yeah, I am definitely like, I want to, I have an order and I want to get everything done. When it comes to presents, my goal with Christmas, anniversary, birthday, Valentine's Day is to make Rachel cry. 
He usually gets something that's like super, super sweet. I don't really like spending money, which is yeah. weird. I like presents, but like you could get me a bunch of stuff from the Dollar Tree. Like I would, I love that. But like he'll usually get something very emotional. One time he did a photo shoot with the That kids. was the best one. Oh my god! Yeah, gosh. and I don't mean make her cry, like cry, like I can't believe he didn't get me anything. I mean like a happy cry. Yeah, no, but that is always my goal because yeah. she's like, I don't want anything. Don't get me anything. Yeah, and then he'll get something super sweet. It's not like you make me cry because you got me a, like a box of poop or something. <laughs> but that is always my goal. I want to get something that is going to be like so sentimental. I mean, and I've done a lot of. I mean, I remember when I got you your first computer. Yes. And, you know, you were like, I am i don't deserve it. But that's my whole thing is that, like, I feel like she deserves it. And she will never, ever, ever spend the money on herself. I don't like to spend money. So I have to just go out and get it done. It's like, you are worth this. But I think the best one, yeah, was definitely, well, there were two of them. The first one was the, the family pictures. I bawled. I mean, she bawled. Like, I, we, I went, I took the boys and just, we got family pictures, and it was the first time I had lost weight, not on keto, and then I put it all back. <laughs> um, but, so we got these family pictures, and I had them framed, and I gave you that. And then the second time that I made you cry, like, unbelievably, was when I surprised you last year for our 10th anniversary. Yes. And I had Pastor remarry us. Yes. Oh, my gosh. At a staff meeting. She had no idea. Not Everybody on staff knew. And like, yeah. As evidenced by what I'm wearing, I had no idea. I should put that in here. Are you serious right now? Is that what you said? Put on a decent shirt. pants like a t-shirt but yeah i didn't know and there was like my mom she walked kids. in because our wedding like we had four people at our wedding right yeah. we had we had your mom her dad her brother my the boys our sister-in-law well that's more than four no but that was that was it but as far as other people who else did we have just shelly we had shelly who was my my uh, best man? That was it. That was the entire wedding, like, party. wedding party. And then of course Miss Beth watching through the side view mirror in her car because I was having like an anxiety attack. So I was just like, I feel like we need to do this right. Like it's our tenth anniversary. It was and nice. so I went to pastor. We did it at seven. He even changed the date of staff meeting to <laughs> to coincide with our anniversary and stuff. It was awesome, but I did cry. It was, yeah, a that lot. was really good. That was like, yes, I did it. That I got a, her to cry. That was a good present. Okay. Um, Sherry wrote. Hey, Sherry. Me too, Joe. It makes me feel funny. Oh, when you get presents. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was the last comment, actually. I just looked over and noticed that I didn't hit record twice on our thing, so we're going to have to rely on the camera audio. So Hopefully you can hear sorry us. Sorry about the fact that this is probably a little echoey. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I think that's a good place to end today's yeah. video. Again, please make sure you go join our Facebook family group. Uh, please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.